Hey guys, how's it going today? It is me, Captain Energy, and today we are here taking a look at the circuit rhythm. And I've been right now working with it, hooked up off of my uh, my Uno Synth Pro, sent doing some sampling, and I've uh, been building a track that I was going to show you guys. Um, basically, I've been uh, just messing around with this thing. <clears throat> I built a track that I'll, I'll play for you guys. It's more of a, uh, less of a just play it track, it's more of a performance type track, so uh, if you bear with me a little bit, I haven't really, uh, not really a uh, performance type person, so uh, we will try and get through this unscathed. Uh, and this is going to also show you some of the features of this, uh, this synth, or the sampler, that uh, maybe answer some questions for you guys. Basically, uh, a lot of people are concerned that this unit may or may not be uh, robust enough to uh, replace basically something like an MPC or, or something else. And it definitely is not an MPC. It is, I mean, I'm not, I have no personal experience with MPCs, but what I will tell you is that this unit at only $400 is a heck of a lot of fun. <laughs> Okay, so if you're looking for an MPC, spend the extra 400 bucks and get the MPC. You aren't going to get the same workflow with this. You are not going to get the same uh, capabilities. Uh, there's a lot more RAM to work with on a, an MPC. Uh, this unit, uh, it's interesting because they say up to 32 gig of RAM, and they're not kidding. I actually tried a 64 gig of RAM, uh, a 64 gig SD card in here is what I meant to say, sorry. And... Um, didn't even recognize it. I tried to format it uh, as FAT32, but you can't. 32, the FAT32 format only handles up to 32 gig, which I thought was interesting because I could have sworn I'd done it before with bigger drives, but for some reason I can't. Maybe it's a Windows 10 thing where a limitation where they cut it back or something. I don't know, but I couldn't get to format in, in FAT32, and it did not recognize in this device at all. It just sat there like, uh, I don't know what you expect me to do, but I'm not going to do anything. So it just sat there. Um, so I went and got myself th some 32 gig uh, memory cards, and it worked like a charm. Popped it in, and everything was good. Um, now, also, the Circuit Rhythm software that's out for this, uh, on it's available online. You can use it on the Novation site is really good. I was a little shocked that it was as good as it is. I mean, because the thing about a unit like this is since you don't have a screen, it even if they put those features in here where you could uh, change your uh, effects and all the things you can do on there, uh, it would be very hard to do because you can't see anything. You can't read anything. There's nothing to read. The only things you can do like on here, for example, if I go over and I go to... Um, tempo you can see this says well you probably can't see it so good on the screen here but it says 130 138 sorry that's my tempo is 138 i can adjust that um by uh see it's the one right that's right there yep and uh yeah i can change it bring it down to whatever 62 any number i want basically up to 240 i think yeah 240 is the maximum um now yeah, I mean, things like that would be hard to do uh, if there were, you know, without a screen. I mean, you, you can't really see that's, or I shouldn't say that things like that. Things like this are the only things you could do here. You can do things like if I go to sample mode and I tap one of these, you can see these like little uh, rep letter type representative representations of what it's trying to say, but you don't really know what that means unless you have a manual, and it's yeah, it's cumbersome in that way but once you learn it it's pretty awesome the thing is so tiny and weighs like nothing i could throw this thing in a bag go to my friend's house and we could do some crazy stuff there you know what i mean it's got audio in audio out it's got a headphone jack it's got a sync uh connection on the back and it's got three midi connectors um one midi in one one midi out and a midi through so it does a lot for what it is um, and it's got, you know, you can have up to 64 samples, I believe, loaded at once. Um, 
Let's see here. We got let's give it a little look here. We got this is a bank one. It's right here. These bottom 16 pads is bank one, bank two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so there are eight banks. So I guess 128 samples. So eight because eight times 16. Uh, Is that right? I'm using 80. Uh, yeah, that's right. 128 should be right. Um, X4 times 16, 64. So times 2, 120. Yeah, okay, boom. Sorry, had a moment there of uh, somehow math just became hard for a moment. Uh, but yeah. But you can take these samples. The ones that are in here right now are, these are some of the ones that it came with. But I mean, I could make a track right now. Let's actually, you know, let's, let's just mess with this for a minute here. Um, let's see. We'll go to projects. Right now, these are the projects I have going on, and I'm just gonna pick a blank one. We'll go right here, I think. I don't think I have anything there. I do not. Okay, good. And we're gonna make a quick track, if that's cool with you guys. Let's just go back over here. We'll go to notes. Is that the same? That's the one I wanted. Now, the one thing about this thing um, that I will say, <clears throat> let's get the drum sounds first. All right. Is that it's uh, monophonic. Now, when I say monophonic, I don't mean just uh, in the uh, audio out part. Like, it's stereo on the way out, but... Uh, the sounds here each track <coughs> pardon me can only have one track one sound going at a time hey hey ivan how's it going man sorry i just saw you there by the way yes just so you know let me answer that question um the question you had about am i a uh am i a regular license license owner of reason yes i am i mean i got that text message from me i didn't get to read all of them but i saw it um I have both right now. I uh, when they were releasing the most recent version of Reason, uh, they had this sale that was uh, three months for three dollars, and I decided to take advantage of it because I was on the beta team and I was seeing Mimic and I was seeing the things happening that were going on, like the new Combinator and whatnot. But I really wanted to be able to use them. Uh, What's a great control surface to use with Reason 12? Oh, hmm. <clears throat> there are a lot of them, honestly. And, uh, I mean, probably one of the better ones. Uh, let's see. I don't know what your budget is, but I'm going to tell you. I've got, I've got the gamut of controllers here, honestly. And even actually, kind of funny enough, like this device right here, um, this circuit rhythm, can be used as a controller. It's a two-octave if I go right here and, and boom, I can have two octaves of, of keyboards uh, and the eight, the, uh, what, is, what do we got here? Ten knobs, ten knobs to use. And it will work in Reason. It works great in Reason. I was trying that out to see what kind of uh, interface I could use it. Could I use it as an interface? Um, same thing I did here with the Unosynth. I tried that out and that also works as a controller with Reason. But as far as, uh, I don't know what your budget is, but if your budget is not not a lot we'll say like like 100 bucks ish um these babies are pretty nice the akai mpk minis um that is one of my controllers uh the one i like best is the akai mpk 49 249 which grab that hold on a second Oops, sorry about that which is this guy this thing is insane and they're kind of a little pricey i think you can get yourself a uh uh arturia key lab mini or one of the you know one of the key lab minis or a, a full-on key lab for not 
a lot of money. Uh, and that would work as well. That unit I like right there because it's got the, uh, you've got eight sliders, eight knobs. You've got uh, trigger pads. You see, if you want to do drums with it, you can easily. It's got 49 keys, 49 velocity sensitive keys. And they're really, it's a really good feeling keyboard. Um, that's the one I would, uh, I was actually mixer console surface. Oh, a mixer control surface. Um, well, <clears throat> let's see. With reason, uh, you probably want to go with something. Let's see. The one that I like is it's from, do you know, uh, if you've heard of uh, Nectar, uh, they have a keyboard called the Panorama. And I have this other device here, but I have not been using it lately. And I'll, I'll just show it to you on the screen here, I think, if I can just go right to here. Bring it over there for a second. Sorry about this. I'm not quite sure if they still have it or not, but this unit, if you've got a keyboard, if you're looking for the full keyboard effect type thing, this unit has all the things I'm going to show you right now in this other device, but Oh, they might have gotten rid of it, actually. That's not them. I think that's what it's called, the Nectar P1. Yeah, that's the one. Might be discontinued. And no, it looks like it's still available. And it's in stock. There you go. This is what is a good controller for a mixer type controller for a reason. Um, Nectar actually started out as a company that made uh, reason specific type controllers. They were the first ones to do it. Yes, that was the, sorry, yes. I couldn't see the chat. I'm sorry, it was behind a window. That's the one that, it's pretty good. Um, I've got one of these. It was a donation, basically, from one of my subscribers uh, because I had the uh, the Nectar, uh, one of the keyboards that had all this on there, but I always kind of wanted the separate uh, device because I thought it would be very handy, very useful uh, to have it as a separate piece. And I could use another keyboard with it. Like I could put that on my desk and I could use the uh, the Akai MPK Mini or I could use something else. And basically, yeah, uh, it, it really is good. That's probably one of the best ones out there. So, I mean, if you're looking for something like that, I would recommend something like that. And you could probably pick these up on, on eBay, I would say, pretty cheap because I don't think that they ever really took off in a big way. The one I got from my subscriber, um, uh, Steve Oldfield, he's one of my, one of my guys. If you see him, he'll, he may be on here. His name's Steve. Uh, but he, uh, oh, <laughs> that's funny. Well, in a nutshell, yes, the P1. 
uh, I had one donated by a subscriber, and it was really cool of him to donate it. Uh, but when he sent it to me, all the if you buy a used one, just know this: the uh, knobs and sliders on these things, the rubber that's on them is really kind of. Uh, I don't know, it's prone to decay or something. Like, depending on the environment they're kept in, like if they're kept in a studio where someone smokes or if they're uh, left too long, like without like being touched, the rubber starts to get gooey um, <laughs> on the knobs and sliders. And if you do decide to buy one and you buy a used one off of eBay, uh, look around real quick because there's a, a guy up there who sells a hundred replacement knobs um, for like $10. They're plastic. They're not awesome, but they're fine. And uh, I bought the replacement knobs for the one that I have. And I bought replacement sliders for the one that I have from my subscriber. And the thing's as good as new. It doesn't look quite as nice as it does uh, brand new. But yeah, I, I would definitely recommend the P1. It's a good, good system. Um, for reason and it also is good for other things too i mean as far as like i use cubase as well um there are there is a way to hook it up to cubase and there is also uh a way to use it as any midi controller uh, midi controller for anything it doesn't even have to be just a mixer type controller it's definitely one of the better uh devices out there like that um other than that there is one from um It might be Behringer. I can't remember. I'd have to search the neck, the uh, the site here for it. But somebody has one um, with eight flying faders. Now, if you know what a flying fader is, then I don't need to explain it. If anyone doesn't know what a flying fader is, it's basically a, it's a motorized fader that when you change controls or change banks of controls, it leaps into the right place so that you're always, your faders always set to where it is in the software. It's kind of cool. Um, like on the, uh, on the keyboard version of that, uh, that device, I just, you know, the P1, it has one flying fader. And as you change banks as, or as you change faders, it will literally uh, change and jump up and down depending on what you've got the volume set to on each channel uh, so that you're always uh, positioned properly. So when you grab it and I move it up, it's going up from where it's set at in the software or down, vice versa. You get the idea. Um, let's see here. Let's swap cameras or swap views. There we go. Yeah, so yes, definitely I would recommend uh, the P1 or I would recommend uh, a keyboard from, from uh, Nectar. They're really good uh, pieces of equipment. I think you'll like either one of them. And I mean, I own, I own and use them both. Uh, other than that, I mean, really, I don't know. I, I personally, as far as mixer type setup, uh, the flying faders, I think, are, are really nice. And, and it may even be Behringer actually has a bank of eight of them. And it does eight at a time as you change eight banks of eight, like one through eight and then, you know, whatever, nine through 16. Uh, it has your volume knobs set up right there and you can just grab them as you change banks. It's it's awesome. Um, I've actually contemplated buying one. I just haven't had the uh, the extra funds to buy something like that. Hey, what's up, Secret Squirrel? What's going on, man? Um, but, uh, yeah. So, I don't know. Good stuff. I mean, I would definitely say that uh, if that's what you're looking for, you'd be looking at 300 bucks new. And you, like I said, if you look on eBay, you can probably pick that thing up for, I don't know, 100 bucks, if that, 120 um, And in pretty good shape. And I would say, like I said, you probably plan on having to spend about, $20, $10 for knobs, and $10 for faders replacements on it if you buy a used one because, like I said, they the ones on there are nice, but they don't hold up. Uh, they, they get tacky and gross. Um, and I actually even tried to call uh, Nectar and order from them. I called them four times and left messages every time, even got them on, tried to get them on Twitter and everything, and there was no response. So to be honest... Uh, they're, they're a company that makes great equipment, 
but I haven't had great customer service from them. I mean, other than, you know, the equipment's been good. So, and I haven't had to call them for anything significant except for uh, to replace uh, something on a, a device that I got from basically someone else, you know. Uh, so that's all. Anyway, so, all right, cool. So, all right, so I was talking about this, but I mean, yeah, but oh yeah, so even if you wanted to, I mean, this this unit right now, as you can see right here, it's, it's just uh, something like this is, is uh, also can be used, that was one of the things I was gonna mention, can be used as a MIDI controller. It does do two octaves of keys, and I'm waiting, actually, I've got a, um, I've got a, uh, what's it called? Launch pad coming. I ordered a launch pad because I have been uh, trying to find a way to get more keys on my desk in a smaller space. And the launch pad seems a good way to do it. Give me 64 keys uh, and whatnot. On demand payment. Add on store. What? Hold on. Am I open to any development on demand for payment? Like for your own product software add on store? I'm not sure what you mean. But I mean, if you're saying would I develop software for, for money? I mean, that's basically what I do for a living. So probably it depends what it is. And um, I'm actually right now kind of less software more creative development stuff right now the uh with between doing the um between doing the combinators and actually starting to do vsts now with halion um and i'm actually talking to uh ujam also about using their gorilla engine uh to build standalone uh vst devices that are not even dependent on anything else other than themselves uh i may go that route i was looking at doing vsts uh in you know just doing them in c and i just decided that it was uh as they say the you know, juice wasn't worth the squeeze um basically for what i have to go through to make it work oh anytime ivan that's cool man i'm glad you came by i'm glad i actually got to you know sort of talk to you a little bit um you know, it's, uh, it's funny. I was t texting you back and forth in the uh, in the chat there, um, but yeah. Oh, but oh, regarding the sounds, by the way, you were asking about if you got all the sounds with uh, the licensed version versus the uh, the subscription version. You do, as far as I can tell, it looks the same to me. But if you don't have them, if the, for some reason you don't have them. Uh, you can just download the demo version of Reason, and they're right there, and you can just drag them in, and you'd have them after that, because uh, they're all part of the demo. It's all it's all right there. The demo is a full product minus licensing, and the other thing, what, oh, the Circuit Rhythm is uh, four hundred bucks new, and I've seen them as low as three hundred dollars on on Amazon, or sorry, on, on eBay, uh, and it's basically a brand new unit, so. People aren't, I don't know, I think people are expecting this to be an MPC, and it's not. And I think it's great. I really dig it a lot. Because um, it's just, the size of it, it's very portable, runs on batteries, it does a lot of things. And it reminds me of trackers from back in the day. And uh, I was looking at that uh, that tracker device, that PolyN tracker, that's it, I couldn't think of the name of it. The poly end tracker it for six hundred dollars, but I was like, man, you know the thing is, I, trackers are great, and I have tracker software, which is the same thing, so I don't see the point in buying it as hardware. But I feel like they should have come along and been a lot nicer by now, a lot easier to use, uh, rather than still sitting there and looking at hexadecimal scrolling by. And this gives me the capabilities of that, only in uh, you know a little sampler it's pretty sweet drum libraries and stuff i want to ask because there's something i know to plug in script. i'm not sure what you mean by plug in script is that an actual thing like uh like is that something that exists or are you just saying as a 
uh, from allowed to develop add-ons to plugin script. Uh, so I have to enter. Oh, it's all right, man. That's just that's just the way it goes when I do live. Um, I sometimes <laughs> I just try and get you know, circle back to where I'm at. Um, yeah, dude, this thing is pretty nice, though. I mean, it. Uh, let's see. Just, but if you yeah, go over here. You, the thing is, you only have it's not polyphonic, so you can't do chords. You know, um, and uh, that would be cool. That's the one thing it's missing. I'm hoping uh, that they'll consider doing that as a software update because they could. Blue Cat Audio creates plugin script. Okay, let me look at that. I'm not sure what that is. Um, sorry if I can't see you guys for a second because I am in a browser that is off screen. Blue Cat Audio. Blue Cat. Audio. And that did not take. Uh, Blue Cat Audio, professional audio plugins. I'm just trying to see what kind of knowledge you have to have to write in this. You do not care about program. Just said something about Lua in here because that's what I'm like getting into. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe I, I just don't know. I'd have to look into this more. It doesn't seem like something I can look into right this second. But it's uh, a while back, but I'm not sure I still have it. The, uh, the type of music I do is uh, I do like Euro trance, that type of stuff. Um, like right now, if I, uh, I'll jump into one of my projects on here so you can hear some of what I've been doing with this thing here. Uh, let's go right over here. Oh, let me get this out so I can actually. And right here. All right. So this thing's kind of a, a bit of a. Half performance, not really performance things. I'm not really a performance musician, but. And then you get my patterns over here, so I've got more than just what you hear. So it's. I was messing with this earlier. This is why I kind of was putting together just to show a little bit of what this thing can do. Um, let's see here. We'll go back to patterns. Um, it's got, uh, you've got 64, or sorry, 16, uh, I can't talk here, 16 samples at a time, but there are 128 total loaded. You've got eight tracks that can play 16 steps 
uh, and you can either play one as an instrument or you can like what I've got going on here is play it as an instrument but when I go over here you can see I'm using more than one instrument which isn't possible on this thing but you can position your samples and just trig them uh, and that's the way you do it the same way you do it kind of in uh, in a tracker except for that in a tracker there's there's some variations but but with all the sampling spots you have in here you can uh, yeah you can fill this thing up with so many different samples and, and call them individually little vocal samples you could use synthesizers I mean when I got this thing for a minute, I was like, what did I purchase here? Because <laughs> I was a little lost in the, the interface and all that. But uh, within a day of owning it, like within like basically a couple hours of owning it, I was like, this thing is awesome. And I've wanted a sampler, a physical sampler. I have software samplers and that type of thing. But I've, I've wanted something I just have like specific functionality to even take with me and just mess around with. Uh, and do things with and also I mean I'm going to build some drum kits on here and use it as a drum machine too I mean because that's kind of what it's I think kind of one of the things they thought of using it as is, is a drum machine because if you go to like uh, where is it uh, not that here it is yeah you got it sets it up with eight drum pads and you can position them across the each one of these one of the sounds uh, which you can see the order I can't remember. I think this might be the actual order they're in. So my one through four and six through eight. Let's see here. If we go to mixer, pink and orange. Oh, no, they got it backwards, actually. That's interesting. Uh, but if you go over here, so this is one through four, and this is six or eight. It's basically set up to be like you could do a drum machine with the type thing with eight different drum samples. But because you can go ahead and... Uh, let me go over and do a new project real quick. The one that I was just in. All right, that one's good. Uh, because you can put uh, different samples in the same track, um, it kind of makes it... All right, here we go. Like, if I wanted to, here's my drum. I just hold down this drum, and I go, I want to put drums here. Then I want to put... Uh, We'll put a clap here and here, and maybe a... All right, there we go. Uh, hold that down. That's one track. Now, it's not, not a great drum pattern, of course, but, you know, that just has... Basically, you could put all your drums on one track if you want to do and put them in so several patterns, If as long as you had spaces like that. If you don't have spaces and you want drums to overlap each other, then you're going to need two tracks. But you can still, two tracks is enough to get all your drums in, and then that still leaves you six tracks to, to play with. The other thing is the... Uh, when... I tried to tell you... Oh, that's what you were talking about, Signal App. I don't think I have Signal App installed anymore, actually, at all. Um, I, I might have deleted it or it might have got dropped for lack of use because Apple does this thing where uh, if you're running low on RAM on something, it decides uh, they, they help you manage your RAM uh, by deleting applications that you're not using. Uh, and making them a downloadable thing. And then I, if I see every once in a while, I go through and see things that I'm not using and go, what's this? I don't even know what this is offhand. So I'll just drop it. You know what I mean? So if I wasn't getting anything on it, I probably killed it. Uh, if I hadn't used it in a while, I probably just removed it. So I don't think I even got the app anymore hooked up. Um, but yeah, it's been been a crazy time. So uh, yeah, good chance it's, it's just not part of my... Uh, software vocabulary at the moment um i actually forgot about what app you were even talking about actually because i'm everybody in my family's using this whatsapp thing uh which i think is kind of funny because it's the uh apparently it's the predominant uk uh chat software um all my wife's family who from ireland uses that to talk back and forth 
cross you know cross the the pond as they put it um and uh yeah and it's just that's their that's their chat method Yeah, I bet you do, but man, it's been a while. So <laughs> it's been, I think it's been like uh, close to six months since I've talked to you. Um, if or in that neighborhood, maybe five months, maybe uh, it's been a while. But uh, the uh, yeah, so. But, uh, yeah, I mean, like, I've got, dude, I've got a lot of different equipment, I was going to say. But this circuit rhythm is just, like, it's so simple and so fun that uh, I just rec I just think it's great. Um, like, boom, we just did drums. Okay, so that's, let's change my tempo because I do not work anything less than, like, 130-something usually. Um, so go right over here. Hit my tempo. We've turned that up to one. 130 okay let's go back over here oh they're there i guess i put them on path to track four for some reason i don't know why but now what i should have done is done this so now they're hard coded on there i can change this without affecting it if you uh if you pick it as the instrument uh for the track it changes whenever i change it so if i go and I go here, it, it just changes the instrument. Um, there we go, we'll get that. That's not a very good sound. Let's do this. I'll find an instrument that actually works for it that I like. There we go. I knew there'd be one sooner or later. Um, different track. Let's go over here. Track one. some cool stuff with the effects um, because not only do you have the effects you don't have a lot of control of the effects here other than to, to add them and remove them but if you go to the uh, to the application which actually let me see here so here for a second see what I'm looking at there we go this is the software that they give you um, and I don't fully I gotta tell you I don't fully comprehend this part yet I haven't messed with it enough but it looks like you can just take ah, so you drag them there okay that's track one Let's go right here loading it over just one second and put that to actually you know what let me save what I have here in case before we go ahead and but you can build your effects up here I guess and drag them over which is kind of interesting to me I don't quite like I said I don't 100% understand what they're trying to do here as far as that goes put this right here and we'll go um, 
Uh, that's going to be good effects too. We'll put that right here. Oh, looks like it already has a beat repeater in there. All right, so we don't need that. But basically, you have uh, different types of things you need. I don't know what these even, some of these do. Uh, digitize, uh, there's a refer reverser, gator, auto filter, digitize, phaser, vinyl. I haven't got to mess with all of them yet. But it's pretty cool stuff. I mean, it's, I don't know, this, it's really weird because I'm like, I'm not used to having kind of half and half. I'm used to having either all, hey, TCK Sounds, how are you, man? I was just watching your video. Uh, a minute ago, you were doing a video on, uh, damn, uh, best Daws of 2021, I think. Nice job, by the way. I thought you covered it pretty good. I thought I was like, that. that's pretty well. I, was, I didn't get to hit like yet because it was on my phone. But uh, I think I'm pretty sure that was your video. Um... But, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I like the Uno, man. The Uno is pretty sweet. I mean, it's, I just updated it too. They just came out with their, uh, with their editor. Let me see here. Let's back to, let's go back to the screen again for a minute here. All right. Um, here we go. And this guy, yeah, they just came up with the editor for it. It's in, it's pretty insane. Um, because now you can actually, uh, save your patches off and, and transfer them around so like I could create patches for it and send them to you or to someone else or whatever um, Yeah, and uh, it uh, It's pretty cool. I was I, I don't know. I, I like it anyway. It's my I have two of them. I have this uh, this little guy here um, and uh, mainly I have this one because Oops, Sorry wrong screen. I'm going for scene four. There we go. I have this guy here because it fits on my desk nice and it's a sound module and I can use it with anything else but I also have the uh, the aluminum full body one with the full size keys and everything I love that thing to play that thing is just so fun I just it's so nice that's funny you saw the same video that's <laughs> man we travel in small circles us musicians um, but yeah <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, I love it. I mean, it's great. Not to mention the thing of it being able to... Uh, I, I do like to... Uh, sampling is cool and recording is great, but I, I kind of hate flattening my sound, if you know what I mean, to some degree. Like, I like doing what we got on, going on here. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. Um, and, uh, but... Uh, you know, once you flatten it and you've committed to it, I kind of like the the liveliness of the actual synthesizer being able to play the sound, like and be able to kind of interact in its own in some way. Like, and this thing's great. Not to mention, since they're uh, they can be used as effects processors as well. Um, I think that's. I mean, that sold me on the second one anyway, right there, because I was like, I was looking at getting a couple of hardware effects units, and when I realized that uh, the Uno Synth Pro could be used in the, as an effects unit and, and it sounded great. Um, it was totally, uh, it was like a no-brainer. The one thing I don't like about it, <clears throat> in the small form factor, <coughs> I'm so sorry, is USB power. I, uh, the USB power on the, uh, on the circuit rhythm is great. It's USB-C, it tucks in nice, and it stays there. This is that crappy, the, my, in my opinion, the worst USB connector of all USB connectors. I can't even remember what the model is called, but it's the one they used to use on Android phones with the really flat, like, garbagey, ultra-thin piece of circuit board that fits in between the... I'm like, dude, come on. I mean, I can already see myself... Uh, I don't know. I, in my head, see myself eventually opening this thing up and replacing that connector with a USB-A connector because uh, to make it, you know, more uh, robust, uh, I don't like the little micro USB, mini USB, whatever they call them, the connector type connectors. They're just junk. They've been junk, and I don't recommend them in any way uh, if I can help it, but this unit only comes that way. Um, I wish they would have actually thought of that and maybe personally, you know, what'd been great is if I could have got a regular USB, a regular power supply, and just use that cable to connect it 
uh, for um, updates because that's all I'd use it for if that were the case. I'd hook it up that way and I'd use the actual MIDI controllers. I have a, a Mach of the Unicorn 8-in-8-out uh, eight eight MIDI controller device that I use to control my, most of my MIDI stuff. I'd hook it up off that and just use it that way. But unfortunately, whatever. Also, the other thing is I've noticed noise depending what I'm powering it off of. Uh, if I have it hooked up to certain in a certain way, you'll get some noise through the USB bus, and that's not cool. But yeah, so let's see what else we can add to this thing here real quick. Um, let's see. Oh, I jumped off the project. I lost my place where I was. Tell me I just lost my whole thing I was just working on. I did. I forgot to hit save, and now it's gone. That's all right. We'll fix that. I lost my... my time and place here for a second that's all right uh, all right let's go right here boom oops now let's find that hi-hat sound again save again just to be sure I don't lose it again because I'm the biggest problem with this thing is there's no undo <laughs> and it's very easy to screw up um, in, a, in a couple ways here like uh, you can uh, be editing something and change like for example if you were editing a, a patch um, let me stop it for one second if we go over here and I go uh and I take this patch and I, you know, change the, you know, start of it or whatever and go. And actually, this won't, won't matter here. Actually, it only works with when you're recording patches. If I were over here. All right. Let's see. If we can, we'll take this patch and I'll go. That's all it made at the length. Interesting. There we go. Okay. So say that's what I wanted. I just cut this thing down to a little teeny thing. And now I go over here and play the sound. I come back here and it lost the changes. You have to hit save in between everything. So if you're sampling... Um, if you're trying to bring a sample in, let's see here. Let's go to the bottom here with this. Like, I'm never going to use this sample here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear this thing. Okay. Now it's gone. Okay, so now if I want to sample this... Just hit this so we can go over here I'm gonna hit record all right now I go find the beginning all right that's cool now I got set where I want it to be unless I hit save if I go over here and play another sound, that one loses the settings. So you got to go back over and once again. And I hit save. Now it now it'll be. Now it's right. Um, that's the one thing. Always hit save. Save is your friend, just like in anything on Windows. Save, 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 save. Uh, if you want to keep it. But be sure when you save that you know you want to save because if you save and you were like, oh, I didn't mean to, too late. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> There's no going back. Um, I've just.
Yeah. Yeah, when you screw up, you have to stop. That's what stinks. That's the part that stinks. But, oh, speaking of the Mac, though, you know, man, I'll tell you, I actually, this, okay, so this is a long story, but um, my, uh, I'll make it short as possible. My PC, uh, which I got last year, it's an i9, I was trying to get a unit with uh, with Thunderbolt because I use Focusrite boards, and I had the Thunder, the ones that used uh, Firewire, and I had the, the Mac Thunder, uh, Firewire to Thunderbolt, you know, Thunderbolt to Firewire converter there. Um, and it was, uh, yeah, it was very complicated because it was like, it was the, it went from the card to a wire, Firewire wire, to a, uh, the Firewire to the old Thunderbolt Mac interface to the new, and then the new Thunderbolt interface, USB-C, to an old Thunderbolt interface on the other side, you'd plug them in together, and it and it finally worked in the end. Uh, but when I got my new PC, it didn't have Thunderbolt, which was really disappointing. And apparently, it's not just a technology that you can pop a card in and add it. I did not know this, and I found out the hard way that in order to get it, I would have to replace the motherboard in the brand new PC, or buy return the PC and buy a brand new one somewhere else that had Thunderbolt. Uh, the cost difference justified the purchase of a USB-C uh, Scarlet interface from Focusrite anyway. So that's what I did. But I did just get a new, another new PC, um, which does have Thunderbolt. So I'm like, yeah, I can finally use those cards again. Because I've held on to them because I've been using them as sub-mixers because they do work as a standalone mixer. And uh, I was a Mac guy, uh, and I still love my Mac. Um but with Apple playing their, uh, you know, M1 games right now, um, holding off on all that for a while, I don't, uh, not, uh, I don't know. I, I'm not a fan of proprietary technologies like that type of thing when they start to go that route and go, uh, yeah, we're using M1 and this is our own thing and we're, you know, no one else can fix it, no one else can service it, you know, that type of thing. Oh, the M1 processor is Apple's new process, well, newish processor. It's basically the same type of processor that is in the iPhones and iPads uh, with a brand new label on it called M1. It's super fast, um, and it rivals the AMD processors from what I understand, uh, according to the benchmarks I've seen. But most of the benchmarks I've seen being run are by, you know, like Luke Mignani and, and like... Uh, Apple folks who really want it to be the best thing ever. And the thing is, when you're biased to a technology, you overlook a lot of the flaws that it has. And those flaws are that uh, software running in it is a lot of it's being run through an emulator. Um, yeah. And right. Yeah. Me either, man. The M1. The other thing is the, the RAM is built in. There's no future in any chip you buy. You buy the M1 and you go, you commit to eight gig of RAM. That's all you're ever getting, and it's not just because it's an Apple thing and Apple limits you on uh, upgrading them. It's you're pretty much hosed. the The processor has the RAM built into it. It's it's great from the perspective of the technology uh, because they've essentially put it in there as though it were cash. But people are. Un underestimating the the tech or, under, or misunderstanding the technology and purchasing machines that are way below spec for what they need because yes it doesn't need as much ram because it can use your hard drive as cash and it's you know but what they're not realizing is these solid state hard drives have a lifespan and when you write the heck out of them and read the heck out of them um you wear them out fast and that was what was happening. People were going through like half the lifespan of their, their drive in like a, a year. Um, yeah, that's, you know, and right now I'm running i9s on both machines. My desktop and my notebook are both i9, 10 cores. Um, and those have been stable as, I mean, as stable as stable can be. They've been the best. Uh, best processes I've ever had. And probably more than I actually need, honestly. Uh I could probably get away with i7s, but I went with i9 for that extra buffer and longevity to them. You know what I mean? So that the M1 is like amazing and all that kind of thing doesn't really 
doesn't really push my buttons per se. And not to mention that's against the i7 is what they're comparing themselves to. I think the i9 was the one that actually could put it in its place a little bit on the Intel side. Um, I could be wrong, but uh, and and don't and I I'm not promising I won't go back to Mac later. You know, you know what I mean? <laughs> like a year or two down the road when they finally got their uh, wires untied and they go, uh, you know, all right, we're going to make a Mac that actually lets us let you upgrade the RAM later on. It's got like 16 gig or 32 gig of RAM built in the processor for super fast performance, but you can add auxiliary RAM, which is that's my concept to have auxiliary RAM to run the applications in and use that as that that external hard drive that they're burning up the solid state drives for throw 120 gig of solid of ram in the machine that it uses and caches off that and then just writes data back to the to the stored drive um you know what i mean and that would be that would be awesome it will yeah i know whichever works best and but the also the m1's a wicked cheap which is crazy to say about an apple product in my opinion though you're getting a great speed machine for not a lot of money um but they're still not cheaper than pcs and they're still you know whatever they're just a tool in my opinion i i'll use whatever uh apple doesn't want you to just expand their computers with third party products so they soldered everything where you can't upgrade secret scroll whichever tools work best right and that's that's it man you just pick a pick a thing that goes and as far as macs go I have my I have an i9 Mac also. Uh, previous it was the last 15 inch Mac uh, with 512 gig hard drive, which I actually use a solid state external drive on a USB C connector, and that thing works fantastic. That's my other, that is my Mac. I use that one for Mac stuff still. Like I do development and stuff on the Mac. Um, and. Uh, Oh, did that actually get pasted in by accident? I see what happened there. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I love the Mac. I do. I mean, and I don't, I'm just not a fanboy that way, though. You know what I mean? Like, not. I'm not saying you're, anyone's a fanboy of Mac on here. I'm just saying, in general, I, I always pick what is best. I mean, if you give me food type thing, you give me a steak, I'm not going to try and eat it with a spoon just to, because I like spoons. You know what I mean? I'm going to go get a fork and knife, you know? That's just life. Um, whichever tool is best for the job is the right way to, to think about things. And uh, and if I could use Macs and, and uh, be happy with the future of them type thing, I would definitely go Mac. Um, but Windows has come a long way uh, in making it uh, a more stable operating system. I mean, there's one guy I've been looking at on, I can't think of his name, but he's a, a Linux guy who's been doing a lot of audio stuff with Linux. And I'm like, dude, if if Steinberg released a Linux edition of Cubase, <laughs> oh, baby, I'd be out the door. <laughs> I would say goodbye to Windows forever. Or if, if Apple would just, I don't know. This this might be a, a real pipe dream, but as far as the... Um, if you think in terms of the uh, yeah, that's the, the you hate Apple, <laughs> Tim Cook. Yeah, he's he's a character that Tim. Um, but uh, I was gonna say the uh, yeah the uh windows has has come a long way though i was trying to say and uh, but but linux would be a better operating system overall because it does handle memory better than windows does and it it you get a lot more performance out of it i feel like but you know uh you know that's just is what it is there i guess uh, but oh but if apple would allow if they would just let windows machines have their operating system i doubt they would ever do that but i'm like look you're writing it for intel machines anyway so why not just let it be on intel machines and maybe charge a like a licensing fee or something so you get some you know, keep your beak wet because i know you guys i know apple uh, themselves they're all about the the green you know making the money uh 
So I would come with pipe wire yet. I was the cheap processing board interface for live. I don't know. Um, I'm not really, honestly, I'm not up on Linux distributions. My favorite distribution, Linux distribution, is Ubuntu or Ubuntu. I'm not sure how you say it. I always say Ubuntu. I used to live with the short U and not the, not the high U. Um, but, uh, the, uh, but I have friends who say it Ubuntu when I'm like, <clears throat> yeah, whatever, man. You say tomato, I say tomato. You know, same thing. We're trying to say the same thing. It's just pronunciation. But, um, yeah, I don't know. But I've been looking at this uh, one guy. I can't think of his name. But he all his music he produces is in on Linux using free software and, and open source software. And uh, it's pretty impressive how far it's come. Because uh, I remember when, uh, I'll say just as Jack Audio was coming out, um, how ridiculous it was to try and do audio on on a Linux software, or a Linux uh, machine. Then came Jack, and that was pretty good. Um, and, you know, there's been changes, but... Uh, I didn't feel this. Oh, sorry, that's your rating. That'd be nice. Hold on, who left Apple? Tim Cook? Tim Cook left Apple, that would be insanity. Um, I wonder what would cause such a thing. What would what would drive him to leave um, Apple where, you know. That might be the guy. UNFA, I'm not sure that is. Um, Yeah, I mean, I feel like they had a, they would have to drag him out kicking and screaming. <laughs> Let's see. That's crazy. Well, if he left, I don't see I don't see anything. That's, but if he did leave that, yeah, I can I can almost assure you that it wasn't voluntary, and he must have done something that they got rid of him for. I mean, I'm not trying to start, uh, you know, whatever, but he must have done something. And it couldn't have been good. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, you win some, you lose some. Yeah. I wonder who will be the next guy to don the turtleneck. Um, maybe we bring back, uh, I can't think of his name, but the Australian guy who used to say aluminium. <laughs> 
I used to like him. I was like, I used to like the 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 uh, the, the productions where he'd come on and be like, and describe the new Apple stuff to you. And it just sounded so amazing. You know, you'd be like, oh, my God, that looks incredible. Look at that thing. And you'd be talking about the architecture and the, they'd show the, you know, the explosion diagram or the exploded diagram, you know, of it assembling itself in midair or whatever. It was just cool. Um, anyway. Let's see here. All right, it's back over here. Yeah, we go. boom. Try to find a sample. Downside of not knowing where the samples are in this library. Nothing like that. That's uh -huh. that's better. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I knew uh, Wozniak wasn't there anymore. Does the circuit come with a dongle key? No, it does not. <laughs> um, but uh, let's see, the... Uh I'm looking for here. Uh, what do I do full time? What I do full time, I actually am a, I'm an application developer. Um, I work for the military, um, contract uh, for the military, but you know, just doing like stuff that's not really military related stuff. It's hard to explain. It's more like the uh, oh, civilian end of military, like whatever, you know. But uh, you know, I do application development, interface design, that type of thing. And that's why, I mean, like, I do music. I did do music professionally in the 90s. I used to work for uh, a record label in uh, Boston, which I won't mention them because they're, first of all, they're gone. Second of all, let's just say the experience was not great. Um, and I don't want to find them, finding me on here and get get them me for defamation of character. I know the guy is still around. But, uh, 
yeah, I worked with them, and I worked with uh, Critique Records, um, and uh, then I worked on my own, on my label, and I released a couple CDs. I started my own label in the, the uh, late 90s, really, and then uh, we got uh, to the point that we had my daughter, and uh, when that happened, I kind of had to uh, take a little break from music, you know what I mean? Um, and I did. The downside of taking a break for that long was I kind of lost all my contacts. My daughter grew up, uh, and I am now just in and then i had my son which basically when she turned five i was just about ready to get back into it and then my son came along and so then i stopped again uh and i hung out longer for him uh and yeah i just got back i've been doing music anyway throughout that time and doing projects here and there but not uh, anything professionally and now that i'm back uh now that I'm getting back into it and it would love to go professional again, I'm essentially, uh, older, you know, I'm in, you know, in my, I just hit 50 basically. Um, and, uh, I'm too old to continue, uh, to do a, you know, career as a DJ or whatever. And not to mention, I really wouldn't want to be a DJ at this point in time, um, or a producer in, in like, out there so i just have fun doing it myself and i started youtube because i do have a lot of knowledge and i just figured i would uh rather than try and implement my knowledge for myself i would try to share what i know with people who are young enough to actually do something with it um and i would still do a project here and there if it came up uh, but channel But yeah, no, it's just wicked fun. I just love doing music, and I've always been into... Oh, man, I've been doing music. I've worked in churches, and I've done... Uh, like, right now, I actually tried to volunteer at my church uh, that I go to on, you know, to do sound for them. Uh, Pre-pandemic, I did. And they uh, decided not to uh, utilize me. They had someone else who was doing the work, and... and uh, it's, uh, he's not a sound engineer. He's a guy who they trained to use a mixer, and it's quite the, the debacle when I, you know, sometimes I'm like, man, I would definitely do a better job at this than blowing out everybody's eardrums, but whatever, that's cool. Um, and I don't really go there all the time anyway. I'm, you know, I guess it's, it's probably better that I didn't get the, uh, position there. My wife likes me to be with her when we go to church, so, um, even though I'd rather kind of, well, no, I wouldn't want not rather be with her. I'd rather be with her. But at the same time, I'd rather be doing something to contribute a little bit to the whole thing. Oh, yeah, I did have all the music circulating. 
And uh, without getting into the whole, uh, without dropping names and without dropping like uh, my past stories, I got kind of screwed hard um, by a guy who owned the label I worked for. Um, and uh, as did pretty much everybody who was involved in the label, uh, other than himself, he made money and everybody else got hosed. So I do have some stuff out there that uh, was stolen from me. Um, which I don't even bother mentioning anymore. And I do have, uh, I had an album called The Clock Tower um, back in uh, 2000. I released it. And I have several songs off there that I use occasionally. Ecstasy 9, Dance With Me, um, one called Tonight. Uh, one, that I, <laughs> one that I licensed samples from the Blade uh, uh, movie for, the you know, the... Uh, if you've ever seen Blade, there's one part where uh, Wesley Wesley Snipes says, uh, "You'd better wake up. The world you live in is just a sugar-coated topping. The real world. <laughs> Let's see the real uh, something beneath it, or uh, yeah, I, don't know, I can't remember the exact thing, but it's but that's basically the gist. It's like this, like when he's talking to this lady the first time. And the first time I heard that, I thought, "Holy techno, Batman! I am so licensing that sample." And uh, so I got in touch with uh, with Restaurant Records at the time, and uh, I believe it was Restaurant Records. Maybe it wasn't them. I can't remember who it was, but I paid somebody to use it so I could release it. Um, and uh, then the song bombed, and no one was interested in it. Uh, but it's you know what are you gonna do? It's it's just life. In the '90s and in the early 2000s, I've been doing techno, house, euro, trance. Uh, not that's not one genre, as you can tell. But but I've been doing all that stuff since back in the day uh uh but it didn't talking to the doctor hold on are, are you talking to a doctor or hold on i believe that you mentioned circuit rhythm is not polyphonic but do you want it to be i would love it to be polyphonic why is there a trick is there a is there a uh uh, patch or something. I I've got to hit up Rick Tinez because, uh, you know, since he's the he's the dude, he's Novation man. He's I love Rick anyway. I, he's like one of my the YouTubers. I I love seeing his stuff. Um, oh sorry, buddy. I shouldn't have read that out loud. I guess. Um. <laughs> oh yes, Blade was talking to. What well, was it? The dog was the doctor it was the girl it was the girl in the first one who got uh bit and he didn't kill her uh because he tries to give her a gun and she's like i don't want a gun and he's like telling her you better like take the freaking gun <laughs> because stuff's about to go down and you got to be ready for it because you don't realize what you're involved in now and uh, that, that's the interpretation any, of, of what he was trying to say. It was awesome. I loved Wesley Snipes and the Blade movies and uh, the whole tax evasion thing. I felt really, man, when that all happened, I was like, no, um, because I was really looking forward to more movies from him in, in the Blade uh, family. And uh, they just never really happened. But, oh, well, we all make mistakes, you know, so nobody's perfect. And I don't know, I would still love to meet him and just be like, you know, dude, <laughs> you know, he was just cool. Um, also, I think I want to say he used to be the uh, the total gym guy before Chuck Norris. And I believe he was the reason I bought a total gym. I'm, I'm pretty sure. And then I saw Chuck Norris and Christy Brinkley doing it later on type thing, like making you know, the commercials for the total gym. But, uh, yeah, I bought the Total Gym. I'm pretty sure it was uh, used to be Wesley Snipes who did the commercials for that. And then all of a sudden he disappeared, and I didn't know what happened. But I guess it was the, the whole tax evasion thing and trying to get out, run off to Canada or something. Um, or some other country. But, but yeah, that was... Uh, checking the patchwork from Blue Cat. Yes, them again. Oh, you're referring to a way to make this thing polyphonic? 
because I've actually thought about it, and there is a um, there is a way to do this, and the trick is this. Okay, uh, you would need software to communicate to it across channels, uh, because I believe I haven't messed with it yet, and I, I do fully intend to to mess with this. Uh, in the near future, which I believe that since it's eight channels, it's probably, probably channels one through eight on a MIDI uh, 16 channel MIDI controller, if you get what I'm saying. If that's the case, then uh, there is a plugin in Reason, and I could use the uh, MIDI, uh, uh, whatever it's called in Cubase, I can't think of the name of it, but there's a, the scripting part of uh, Cubase. I could write something in there, but that would take notes and go, you know, as you played the notes, because you, even as much as how did you try, you aren't hitting three notes simultaneously. Um, you're hitting them, you know, within reason, reasonable proximity of each other, so they sound together. But uh, the computer can detect which is which, and it would grab up to four notes and then spread them across the four channels. So you would, but then that would break this down to two instruments. If you know what I'm saying, so we'd have channel one, one through four would be channel one, and channel five through eight would be channel two. Now the downside of that is that you'd lose a lot in it, but it would be cool as a sampler. If I were just using it for sampling and just playing back samples, it'd be cool, but you'd lose a lot of the functionality of it, and it would lose its value in that. It, basically, I'd be better off buying something like um, than an MPC would be a better deal, 800 bucks, and I could play, uh, pardon me, I could play uh, stereo, or I could play multi-polyphonic -poly notes. Also, I've got, um, I did uh, request a, um, what is that thing called? The Roland 404 MK2. I've got one of those coming to try out. Um, and uh, it's going to be a little bit before I see it, probably the end of November. But uh, once I do get it, I'll be doing a, a video on that. And that is kind of like this, too. Same, I just found out that that's monophonic. But it's 16 channels. So you've got 16 tracks instead of uh, 8. And you've got 16 pads of sound. And, and it's kind of interesting the way it works. Um, it's got a lot more memory to play with. And it's a really good effects unit. It can be used as a dual CD deck type thing for DJing or whatever. It's got some really cool features to it. Um, and I can't wait to try it out, but, uh, I don't know that I'm going to want to keep something like that. I'm just going to want to take a look at it and review it and, and get it done just to see what, you know, if anybody's interested in it on my channel. Um, but we'll see what happens. This thing's a keeper for me. Um, and I've actually, I actually tried to get a second one. I found one on, uh, on uh, eBay, somebody had one on eBay for like ninety dollars or something. It was down to like nine. So I was like ninety bucks, and I shouldn't have bid on it. I should have waited, and uh, sn like sniped it in the end. But I hate doing that in a way because I feel bad for people in a sense, like losing a ton of money on stuff they're selling. But at the same time, I know it's. You know, whatever, man. You know, they're selling it. You got it for cheap, blah, 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 whatever. But at the same time, I'm like, I feel bad. Um, if you use patchwork, you can be diagnostic to use without loading load of Cubase or without loading. What do you mean without load of Cubase? Without loading Cubase? Is Patchwork a... I mean, is, is that just a... I don't know what that is. I'll have to look at it and see what it is. It's I, it, I started looking at it, but it was like too much to read while I'm online. You know what I mean? See where we at here. Well, 
would be nice also if they had copy and paste in here because I would like to be able to take this pattern that you're hearing right now and paste it here and, and tweak it a little bit. But uh, as far as I know, there's no copy or paste. Um, that's all right. You know, things will change. I'm sure there are going to be updates to this thing. It only came out, I believe, in July. So it's two months in. Um, there was... Uh, was, there, was there an update? I think there was an update, like an update to it. Something. I don't remember what they tweaked. But somehow it gave you more uh, RAM. It probably cleared some of the like trash that was sitting in there out of it. It gave you more sample RAM. Um, and I did win a... Um, the counterpart to this thing, actually, let me just stop this one more second again. The counterpart to the circuit rhythm is the circuit tracks, which is a uh, four channel drum machine, two channel polyphonic synthesizer, two channel sampler. And the two channel sampler, I believe, is polyphonic. The synths are polyphonic, and the drums are monophonic. So it's one drum per track. But you can do the same type of thing you can do here with that. Um, except I think the drums are built in. I don't know if the drums are samples or not. I can't remember how it all worked, but I got that for, I, I got that really good. On, I got that on eBay also. I mean, like it, it's basically brand new. The guy got it and barely used the thing. It only came out not that long ago. And he says he used it like three times and just never really got into it. So I'm like, I will take that and I will bring that on and add it on to this guy here. Um, also I've got a, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I ordered the uh, the launch pad because I really actually it's gonna say, like I want more keys on my screen or my desk, and the launch pad will give me 64 buttons in a little more than this area here. It's probably like this much area, uh, 64 keys, so I could have like four octaves basically if I went if I went with the uh, um, if it went chromatic, or I could do it does scales and that type of thing. Plus, it's it's really mappable and that type of thing. I was looking at the control, the setup for it. I'm really looking forward to getting that. It should be here tomorrow, but I don't know that that's actually going to happen because uh, for some reason, uh, what are they called? Sweetwater's been using uh, FedEx to ship, and every time I order anything from Sweetwater lately, uh, I'm in Pennsylvania. And the thing I order goes to uh, one place in Pennsylvania. I can't think of the name of the area, but it's uh, it's like 400 miles away from from where I live. Okay, and uh, and it goes there. And every time it gets there, I get an exclamation point in the the tracker, and it says your package may be delayed. And then it says it'll be shipped here tomorrow. Okay, instead of today, which it was supposed to be here today. So now they're saying it'll be here tomorrow. And I, with 90% certainty, I can tell you it's not going to be here till Monday. Uh, because that's what happened with the circuit rhythm. I ordered this from them, and it came, went, went to that warehouse, and sat there for two days. And I just was getting irritated every time I looked at the thing going... Are you serious? What have they got? Some Jamoke over there at FedEx in <laughs> Western Pennsylvania that... Uh, doesn't know what the heck they're doing. What is going on? <laughs> you know? um, I don't know. But uh, yeah, it's just crazy. And I mean, in the U.S. mail is even worse. Uh, when you get stuff through them, it's been horrendous. Um, I feel like there's no good method of shipping anymore. Uh, that's why we've got to really work on teleportation. Uh, because, no, I'm just kidding. Um, oh, sorry. I'm not sure if you answered my question before, but I didn't hear... Did the question was, did you ever go to recording school or did you just learn on your own? Uh, the question, that question, I never went to recording school. Actually, I don't even have formal music training per se. Um, I have been in, uh, a musician since I was six or seven years old. I'm now uh, 50, 51. Actually, I forgot I just changed, turned 51 recently. Um, so I've been playing instruments for 45 years. I uh, started out in school uh, and I wanted to play piano. I was very attracted to playing piano uh, as my main instrument, but my parents did not buy me a piano. 
uh, because they could not afford a piano. I, I lived in, it was 1976, 1977, I guess 1976 probably, because uh, I started when I was in first grade, and they came around to give us like the option to take music lessons at school. My parents couldn't get a piano, and you know, it's not like today where you could get a Casio for 50 bucks and practice on that. There was nothing. You either had a piano or you did not have a piano. So uh, in the end, my father ended up deciding that I would play trumpet since it was the instrument he always wanted to play as a boy. Um, and uh, that's to make the long story short. So I got a trumpet. Um, my dad was a, an immigrant from Portugal, and uh, he really liked the Portuguese music and wanted me to learn that. Well, I played trumpet for several years, and I joined a gospel band um, where I played trumpet. And at the same time, though, I was a spot, an aspiring musician in, at something else. I didn't know what. I wanted to play piano or keyboard or organ. I was learning organ because it was, uh, you know, it's a different instrument than keyboard, but it was fun. Um, and I had access to one of those old uh, organs that sounds like a compressor when you turn it on. Uh, with the brown uh, plastic and the, uh, you know, the chord keys on the left and the, uh, you know, your individual notes on the right. Basically, it sounded like garbage and you turned it on. There was like a vent you could change to change the volume. Uh, <laughs> more air, louder. <laughs> but uh, then I uh, I played guitar. My uncle taught me some guitar, for, and, and that was, I played in the church music ministry. Um and uh, then I got into rock and roll uh, in my early high school years, uh, which was not a big hit with my parents because they were super, super religious. And rock and roll was the devil's music, uh, as we all know, you know. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's what I dealt with. Um, and then I got into pop music, which I really liked. And I really wanted to play keyboards still. I still really wanted keyboards. And when I became like a senior in high school, I got my first keyboard and started learning to play. Then I took lessons for, I'll say, four months. Um, and uh, I just didn't feel like it was progressing fast enough. And yeah, then I just kind of uh, went from there. I just understood keyboards anyway because I played guitar. And, uh, and then I just got into, since then it's just been like one thing after another. And I just read a lot and, and experiment and uh, and get things done. That's pretty much it. I, I worked when I worked for the label, they hired me because I was a DJ and I had uh, I had been DJing and making my own tracks with a tracker on a PC. Um, and uh, that was how I started out really getting stuff out there. Yeah, rock in the eight. We, I don't know how old you are, but that was for me, it was the 80s and it was the hair bands and I uh. I've almost got hair again like that. Uh, my hair on my on the picture you're looking at is uh, shaved. I used to shave my hair, my head. Um, have not, uh, can't really see it going on yet, but it's almost, it's, uh, wow, it's pretty curly in the camera. That's crazy. But it's getting longer. I'm kind of uh, waiting for it to get long enough to to do a full reveal. So you kind of got the, the pre-reveal peak just now. Um I can't bring that rock and roll in the church, LOL. Yeah, well, yeah. you want to have something funny? The church I go to now is a very progressive church, and they play rock music in church. And they actually, when they started doing it, they were saying a lot of people actually left. <laughs> I'm like, that's hilarious, because every Sunday is like a like a concert with them. Um, the there's you know live music and all that kind of thing, and uh, it's just it's pretty cool. Um, I don't. Uh, you know, I won't call myself super religious. I'm because I'm not. My wife enjoys going to church, and that's why I go. I want her to be happy, so you know, I, I do things that make her happy. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, but it's good time. I mean, and it's, I, I I don't think church is a bad thing. I definitely don't. I feel like it gives you, you know, especially in your youth, it's a, a good moral compass, and uh, it's a good reminder of uh, you know that that compass as you're an adult i feel like it's like you know um but uh yeah i know it is kind of crazy that's still a mindset though 
the band live as Christian rock? I don't, think, I don't know if they are. I used to listen to, this is funny, if you remember Striper, okay, in the 80s, I discovered Striper. And I was so excited to listen to hairband rock that my parents would let me listen to. Uh, because other than that, I was sneaking ACDC and White Snake and all the, you know, all the bands that were a poison. I mean, and it's kind of funny. I actually met Rick Rocket one day um, out here in Pennsylvania. I was in uh, Mechanicsburg and I went to this pancake place. This uh, well, it's called Juice and Java Cafe. That's what it was. And uh, they made pancakes and waffles and stuff too. But I, I'm talking to this dude who's sitting there having his breakfast just randomly because I'll talk to anybody. I mean, I'm, I'm one of those those guys in line at the grocery store who'll start, who'll start up a conversation, like a meaningful conversation with the person in front of me. And, you know, <laughs> just, I just do it. I don't know why. It's just me. Um, I'm not like super outgoing. I just can't not talk for some reason. But um, I see this guy there and I'm like, so I'm chatting with him and he's like, I'm like, I see him. He's got a sequencer on his screen. I said, is that Cubase? And it was Cubase. And we were talking for a minute and I was very, very knowledgeable at Cubase. So I gave him a couple, you know, tips and tricks and whatnot and helped him with a couple things. And my friend who was there with me goes, dude, do you know who you were talking to? I said, what, the pancake guy? Uh, yeah, I don't know. No, whatever. He was just a musician, and, I, and we were just talking music. He goes, yeah, that was Rick Rocket, the drummer from Poison. And I'm like, I'm like, you serious? He's like, yeah. I'm like, I didn't recognize him without his makeup. Um, <laughs> it was funny. But, uh, yeah, it was uh, it was crazy. And uh, I was like, damn, man, that way I, I wish I'd known that. But at the same time, I don't think I would have treated him any different because I'd worked with people who were, you know, famous and whatnot. And it's just like, you know, they don't want to be like all pointed out. And, you know, when they're trying to have breakfast and stuff, they just want to be like, hey, yeah, we can chat for a minute. It's just, you know, whatever. Um, so that's, you know, whatever. Uh, da -da -da -da. Yeah, Striper, they, yeah, they had a, they were, they were, very uh like hairband christian music they wore like yellow and black uh and uh they were pretty good i mean you know whatever but you know at least my parents didn't like you know get mad at me for listening to that at the house but i mean i, w I had a secret life if you will uh of going out and i was in i was in a band um and they didn't know about it i kept that on the low I was in the guitar club at school, which my teacher used to open up for uh, Eric Clapton and uh, uh, the Doobie Brothers and a bunch of... He was like, he'd been around the block. He was an older guy, but he was like telling me all of his like youth type of stories. And I was like, dang, man, that's that's insane. Why are you an English teacher now? <laughs> but uh, yeah, he was a good guy, real good. He, and he was the guy who actually helped me really learn... Uh, more about rock guitar and how to play rock guitar because up till then I was all chords acoustic and you know uh very christian like uh you know happy christian songs but ah so you're, you got me by a couple of years been DJing for 30 plus years yeah I used to DJ in Boston actually myself too I love DJing DJing's the best it really is so much fun and that's one of the things I love about like I'm saying, these little things like this guy here and, uh, well, and like this right here. And I mean, like I've got turntables still. I've actually thought of doing, and I might do a, uh, like a live show with, you know, DJing and, and some of my old music, play some of that and, uh, and play some other music. I just, I actually got to put it out there. I have put it out there a couple times, but I'm, I'm starting to get more people. So now I might actually be able to accomplish my goal here, which my goal is to, one of my goals, I should say, I don't, it's not my specific goal, but would be to have people who were musicians or are musicians who are on my YouTube and write their own music, but don't use samples that are illegal because I don't want to get in trouble and want to hear their stuff played on a show, like a radio type show, whatever. And um, and basically do like a Saturday night after hours uh, stream 
with music from DJs, GCD, great spot in the contemporary church music. GCD is a great temper, a contemporary a spot in every music. In in reality, I think ninety percent of the pop music you hear today is uh, right there. I'm throwing an A minor, um, and uh, <laughs> or CFG A minor. Um, those 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 are uh, yeah. And uh, we used to do D A like a lot of the Christian songs we did were D A G G C D, uh, C F G. Um, yeah, very three chord you know wonders, if you will. They were all the same just different slightly higher than the last when i learned my first minor chord song um i was over the moon i was like whoa this sounds totally different than anything i've ever done before um <laughs> uh but yeah right you've got to be your own producer today you've got to be your own and today producers are more than they used to be in the sense, like, back in the day, a pro well, maybe the less than they used to be. It's kind of hard to explain. Back in the day, producers wrote music or, or took music and made the music that somebody else wrote lyrics to, somebody else sang, someone else performed. A lot of times today, the producer's the whole, the whole shebang. I mean, you look at someone like Doll Trick, um, who I love her so much. She is so amazing. Her music is, it blows my mind. If you, if you don't know who Doll Trick is, check her out. Um, or like uh, Bad Snacks, Doll Trick. We got uh, Andrew Wong, if you want to look at... Uh, he does some amazing stuff. I'm not... Andrew's a little too hyper for me sometimes. But I think we'd be good friends. Um, Cuckoo. Like, I mean, all these people are like... They're musicians who make their own music, produce their own thing, do the whole... the whole. That's where I'm going right now on my own. Where it's like, I'm just going to do it all. And whatever. Whatever happens, happens. I don't care. I'm like, I'm doing it for fun, um, and I have a real job, per se, that I'm probably going to do till I retire, and then once I retire, I'll be streaming every day, um, <laughs> because I won't have anything to do, um, So and, and also, I'll really enjoy doing it, like, I'll be like the new Rick Beato at that point, you know what I mean? Uh, Rick, you know, he's uh, quite the guy, too, I mean, I don't know how old Rick is. I don't think he's that much older than me. I think he's like probably my uncle's age. Orchestra Library, spa, specifically Vienna Symphonic Library. I'm looking to invest, but need to figure out some stuff about Synchron Synchron Library. I don't really do orchestral stuff. Um, most of the stuff I do is synthesizers. Um, anything I have that's orchestral is came with something else I bought, if you know what I mean. I didn't buy any specific orchestral stuff. I have native instruments, their whole their whole you know shebang package there. And uh I can't think of the name of it, but it's like fourteen twelve or fourteen hundred dollars in, in complete, I think is the everything. I've com got complete the latest version with all the things. Um and I've got whatever came with uh Halion because I have the the absolute package also so i don't really i don't really look for that type of instrumentation i don't really it's not something i really work with much i can appreciate it and i love it and whenever i see hans zimmer do his thing it blows my mind um but yeah oh no worries man i mean if if you stumble on something like like the uh bbc stuff or whatever um their stuff sounds amazing i mean i put it this way I wouldn't buy it because I don't feel like I'd use it enough. But if I were able to get my hands on it, um, you know, I uh, I wouldn't throw it out of the studio, if you know what I'm saying. I'd definitely love to have it. I just don't feel like it's uh, something I actually need. Honestly, yes. That was a good song, Calling On You. That was a good one, too. Uh, was did they was theirs together as one? I think was one of theirs. Uh, uh, and free like free to do what you want to. Uh, I forget the uh, I, I can't remember the titles, but man, I I used to love them. Um, and uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, I was I was always with the musicians at, at at church and that type of thing, and I was hanging out with, 
you know, it's been kind of a big thing for me. Um, but I'm also an artist, like uh, I paint and I draw and I do like all my thumbnails and stuff. Whenever you see a, a lot of the art that I put up on there is stuff that I did myself. I do, uh, my daughter's a tattoo artist. Um, and, uh, I've basically taught, you know, worked with her a lot on her drawing skills throughout her life. So it's kind of exciting for me to see someone actually get to utilize those skills. Cause I always thought to myself, um, that I might pursue that, that line of work at one point, uh, being a tattoo artist. My problem is I'm, um, I'm too modest to be a tattoo artist. If you know what I mean? Like I'm not comfortable with people you know, having their body hanging out or touching people. I don't know. Uh, I'm weird like that. Like, I mean, most people be like, yeah, that's not so bad. You know, touch, you know, this girl wants a tattoo on her you know, lower back or whatever. And that's good with me. I'm just like, uh, eh, I don't know, man. I just, I, I kind of bashful about touching people. And I'm also, I don't like being touched like that type thing. Like my wife always tell me you should get a massage. It would help with your anxiety. It would help with you. This It would help with you that I'm like, I don't like people touching me. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I never got to see them live either. Um, I don't, I've, uh, the only people I like, it's funny because, uh, you know, when you don't have a real good frame of reference in life, it's funny the things you come up with because uh, this is just an interesting little side note here. Sixth to seventh grade, I was uh, very wrapped up in church, not very wrapped up in, uh, wrapped up in, in you know, secular music. Um, so I didn't know the name of a single band uh, that wasn't Christian uh, at the time. And we, in my art class in school, my teacher had us design an album sleeve which was funny because it was just like the project. And she says, like, you know, when you design an album sleeve, it could be any band you want, blah, blah, blah. And everybody's like doing ACDC and like Led Zeppelin and, you know, this guy. And like, I don't even know who Ozzy Osbourne. And I'm thinking to myself, and, and there I am. And I'm like, the only band I could think of was these two girls. And there was an artist named Don Francisco, who was a, he's kind of like a, guitarist singer who I liked a lot back in the day, kind of a folky type singer, but he sang his own songs. Uh, and, uh, he was Christian. And then there were, there were two girls from my church who I, who were sisters and had like a band type thing. And I, I did them as my cover, you know? And my teacher was like, who is this? <laughs> I'm like the Galasso sisters. And she's like, who are they? And I'm like, they're two girls who sing together in a band at my church. And she's like, oh, <laughs> kind of like, oh, you're, you're that religious weirdo guy. And maybe I was at the time. I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, good times. You know, we just, uh, you know, we, you just don't know what you don't know at the time. You know, I just, I didn't know any bands. I didn't know uh, much about, you know, non-Christian music. Everything I played was Christian music. Amy Grant uh, I mean, was like, you know, before she was, uh, when she was a Christian singer, before she went and became, did her first non-Christian album, um, I used to listen to Amy Grant. I mean, there were a bunch of bands. The first, second chapter of Acts, rather. Um, loved them. That was the first synthesizer I ever saw. When I saw a second chapter of Acts, I went and saw them perform uh, in Boston. They were playing at a church that I was playing at uh, two weeks later. My band, I was in this band called Gospel Ship. And we were going to be performing this. So we went there to see the concert and to see the church, to see how it sounded from the outside. So we, yeah, we're just being weird. But yeah, we went there and I was like, whoa, what is that? And my, uh, the pre people with me were like, what do you mean? And I said, that, what are they playing there? That looks like a piano, but it sounds like horns. And they're like, oh, that's called a synthesizer. Have you, do you know what a, you don't know what a synthesizer is? And I'm like, I'm like 12. So now I didn't know what a synthesizer was. I'm like 12 or 13, maybe 13. And I'm like, I had no idea. And I'm like, you can make sounds like that with a keyboard. That was when I was sold for sure. You know, I was like, oh, I am definitely getting me one of them. Um, I don't know what it was. It was probably some early Moog. Um, it was giant and had wires hanging all over the place on it. 
and I remember seeing it and the sound that came out of this thing went through your, like you felt it through your entire body. It was soul shaking, like amazing. And, and like first time experience in my entire life. And that from that day on, I knew that was what I wanted to like sound like that type of thing. Um, but, uh, and actually the funny part is before I was like into the church thing, when, up till when, when I was probably nine or 10, I guess my mom was way into disco. So I loved disco, um, from the seventies, but that didn't really translate into the eighties so well. But I mean, and now it's like, I just hear and hear music and hear in disco again is awesome. Like hearing Italo disco or regular disco from back in the seventies. And like, you know, to see, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Giorgio Morota, um, and, uh, to hear his music and, and be like, that's where that came from to, cause now I had a gap in my life. You know what I mean? Like of this, like, I didn't know the history. I didn't know the artists. And then now I look back and I'm like, oh my God, he's the one who did Donna Summer. I have, you know, I feel love. Oh my God. That Giorgio Morota is awesome. You know, I just think I, I would, he's another dude I'd like to meet or like to get to work with or do something with, you know, just cause. Giorgio Morota, he's just kind of like one of my from the 70s heroes, you know? I mean, and uh, it sounds stupid, but I mean, because I was like a child, but um, to hear the kind of music that he made was very inspirational to my, like, to my now, you know? Um, but yeah, anyway. Uh, what time is it? Let's see, it is 8 o'clock almost. I should probably, I'll go for uh, like 8 more minutes. I'll go till actually 8, it's 7.52. But I should probably get off the uh, stream so I can hang out with my family a little bit. Uh, I've been up here. Actually, it's funny because I had uh, one hour of the stream that uh, you guys did not get to see because I, what do you call it, uh, something went wrong in my, when I clicked, you know, go live, it just didn't take. So I must have had like a glitch in the system where it just didn't cache that click or didn't. I don't know what happened. So I'm sitting here thinking I'm live and I'm seeing myself live and I'm like, I don't see that uh, the live timer going off. I noticed it after about an hour of talking and, and going through basically on my, on my, you know, circuit rhythm. I'm like, what is going on here? And yeah, I'm like, but it's much better than the other day when uh, my son accidentally put me on live and I was not trying to be on live. He came over and activated accidentally messing around with my computer and I was, basically sitting here talking about guns with him for uh an hour before i realized you know that i was on i was streaming i'm like dude did, why did you he's like i didn't do that and i'm like you did you totally did because i was showing i was just showing him air guns we were looking at uh trying to find uh a nice pellet gun to take to uh we there's a, a club near my house where they have like competitions and that type of thing. And my son really wants to get into that type of like, you know, target shooting and whatnot. And uh, they have a pellet team and a BB team and they have a, a gunpowder team. I said, well, you know, at first I think you should try the pellet team uh, because I don't want to have to buy him a gunpowder gun that costs like five times as much to find out he hates it um, and doesn't want to do it. But, you know, I figure if he likes it, it will give it a year. And if he likes it, we'll go and get him a real gun. He can do that. That'd be fun. Um, I need to catch a tutorial to figure out how to install Big Sur into VirtualBox so I can help my nephew set up his... Uh, yeah, good luck, man. I, I don't know how uh, you do... You, there's a... Uh, oh. If you look... Well, I don't know if I should give this kind of information up, but there's a guy who does Hackintoshes, and he... he uh, I can't think of his name, but he, he looks like sort of a professory looking guy and he has his symbol or his uh, logo has like, you know, his eyes with like, you know, circle like type glasses or whatever on his eyes. And it's crazy looking. He does a great job. If you, if you look him up, just look, look up Hackintosh. Um, he, he has uh, tutorials and all that. If you're trying to set it up anyway, secret, I'll catch you later on, man. Have a good night. Um, and I'll be working on my, uh, my VSTs shortly. Uh, so look, I'll be, I'll let you know when the Lin is ready too, because the, uh, I'm trying to figure out which of the drum kits is going to be the most complicated of the Lin, the 707, 808, and 909. And I'm going to build that one first so that the other ones can, uh, basically step down from the, the most complex one, if you know what I'm saying. Anyway, so, all right, my man, be good, be safe, have a good weekend.
Uh, but yeah, let me see if I can get back to this for a minute here. While we're, uh, well, where did I leave off? Let's see. Uh, patterns back over here. Boom. All right, so we're gonna go down here. Let's go down here. And on the wrong instrument. Wish there was just a, uh, I mean, there probably is a way to just clear this this pattern out. I have to look that up, really. It's just kind of right now, I'm kind of, I've been uh, just manually clearing it, I guess. Um, I don't think I may still have a channel himself. Hold on. Oh, what was the question? Oh, sorry. Oh, bumped into the keyboard. I was reaching for my mouse. Sorry. Uh, I do have a Discord, actually. Yeah, I do. Um, but uh, I haven't. Let me see here. I haven't really done a lot with it except for advertise other like sh like um um. There we go. Let me get it for you. I uh just use it to usually talk about uh tutorials and stuff i have going on um where am i there i am There you go. Uh, if you guys, yeah, if you guys want it, there's my, that's my Discord. Um, yeah, I know. It does kind of sound like Streets of Rage, doesn't it? That sound, that instrument. I, Dude, so you're a gamer too. All right. <laughs> that's funny. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I do. That's that's my genre. Basically, back in the day, was Genesis type stuff. Uh, back in, the, I still, I mean, I play today. I play Call of Duty all the time. I cannot wait for Vanguard. I'm so excited. Um, I just don't have a lot of time to play as much as I would like to, honestly. Because I mean, there are days where I will sit here and the day will melt away, and all I will have done is unlocked, you know, four or five guns and all the attachments to it. Um, but, uh, you know, that's just my, uh, you can find me there. Yeah, that's, that's where I'm, that's my, okay, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, you guys sign up for, if you want to sign up for the Discord, go ahead, hop, hop over. I usually put all the tutorials and stuff up on there that I'm working on and, uh, I, uh, I mean to actually do something with it more than just nothing, really, than just have, like, an index of stuff that I work on, but 
we'll see what happens. Uh, I am also setting up an actual website, like I uh, was saying. Uh, do... Oh, yeah, the girl in the red. Great legs. So I also did the... <laughs> <laughs> sorry yes julie was cool <laughs> um yeah streets of rage was great actually there's a uh, there's a new uh, i forget when it came out but there was i just saw a thing recently that there was a new streets of rage that uh came out uh for consoles it might have been streets of rage 5 or something which i had didn't even know there was a newer one than than the ones that i had seen in the past but it looks like sega's still at it type thing so uh, that's good with me. I love Sega. I mean, they were my favorite back in the day. It was a, I was a true Sega fanboy. Um, I was anti Nintendo, you know. But uh, yeah, that's uh, at the time my friend, my friend Joe and I were like, you know, just uh, you know, the the most over the top Sega fans you ever did meet. And I swear, man, if the streaming was a thing in 1990, I would be. I'd basically have been PewDiePie uh, at this point because <laughs> I would have started a channel and I would have been like going crazy streaming Sega Genesis games and me and my friend Joe would have been like the most insane personalities you ever did meet uh, at the time because we just blew so much money and time playing video games and just were like his father used to think we were crazy because we'd be in the room just playing games and like screaming at the TV and like it was just like nuts. Um, I think it would have been quite entertaining for people to watch because uh, uh, it's well, it's a sampler, but it uh, it can do anything. I mean, it can you can use it as a drum machine. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the circuit. Well, it depends which. Well, they're both. There are two. The circuit rhythm, even though it's called the rhythm, is a uh, sampler and a drum machine. Like right now. I mean, I, I mean, I recorded a sample in it earlier, but I mean, you can record anything into it. And actually, that was my, that was this guy right here when I recorded that earlier. But I mean, if I go over here and just go, uh, like right now, uh, I'll clear this. this. Sorry. All right. So we go over here and I talk into the microphone. Oops. Didn't gotta cut myself off. Oh, there it is. Testing. Yep. Jim can't sample apparently. What is going on with me today? Testing one two. Testing one two. So I mean, you know, that's uh. And then you testing can adjust one, the. Two. Testing, testing, one, testing, one, testing, one, test, test, testing, one, testing, testing, one, two. Yeah, let's see. Uh, testing, one, two, testing, one, two. Where is the uh, test, 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 testing, one, two. All right, now we'll save. And now if I go back to it, yeah, I mean, all the things you can do with sampler, uh, it's got uh, reverse, it's got reverse, choke, loop, gate, one shot, depending on what you want to do with it. Um. Uh, what? Which one did I record that in? I don't know. Let's see. Oh, we're at the bot. We're at the very top. Okay, so let's go over here, and if we go to the very top of my samples, I kind of wish there was just one like LED so I could remember what which one I was in. Uh. Oh, maybe I was in at the very top. I recorded over here, so there I am. You can send uh, satanic messages. Just kidding. Um, but yeah, <laughs> we got reverse, we got choke, we got loop. Um, let's see if we. Let's 
Yeah, but yeah, anything you want to do with it, man. It's a, uh, I don't know, it's a versatile little thing, and it's an effects unit. You can use it just as an effects unit, um, just like you could do with the Uno. You can use this and just run audio through it, in and whatever audio comes in um, can be run through the effects. Um, I don't know, man. I think it's I think it's a great little uh, gizmo type thing, and I, it's it's pretty cool. I wish. I just, I mean, I don't know. I wish it had a few things, but at the same time, most of what it's got is enough to keep me happy. Uh, and and for the money and for the, you know, for the thought that I could take this thing, charge it up, uh, you know, I, I haven't tried it yet with a microphone directly in, like a, like if I put like a, just a quarter inch microphone, you know, if I think just a regular microphone with a, you know, bulb type, you know, whatever, like a Shure SM 557 or something. Uh, 47, 57, SM57. I think it's 57. But if I took an SM57, hooked it up to a quarter inch jack, and shoved it right in there, and tried to just you know record with it that way, I haven't tried that. But I wonder how it would fare. Could I actually take this thing on the road? I might actually try that, uh, and see what happens. Just for the hell of it, to see if it's uh, I mean something I can actually take on the road and, and make music as I run around. I mean the one downside to my iPad, in my opinion. Is that uh, the microphone in it's kind of kind of eh, and uh, especially now that Apple's being goofy and taking away all my jacks to it, and I have to now carry a a hub and a sound card uh, and a microphone and an external controller to really use it to do music stuff. It's becoming a lot to carry, uh, and I don't feel like there's a lot of benefit, except that the software is cool on it. A lot of the software is cool on it. Something like this could be just a specific purpose thing that I just take my phone with me and this. Um, and if I want to, I could take, you know, uh, let's see here, get my face and there we go. If I, uh, if I wanted to, I could get myself uh, just a, you know, whatever, like a cheapy sound card off this thing or even a headphone jack, one of the headphone jacks, and run that right into the back here and use one of the, the instruments on here. Uh, as a sound source, like I can go over here and go to, well, I can go to this 909 drum that I have right here and just go, whatever, you know, grab these samples off here and make myself a, whatever. It'd be, you know, just run it right in and grab some sounds off there and that'd be my sound source and this would be my, basically my DAW um, without being a, you know, full on DAW, you know. It'd just be cool. I mean, and like I said, though, you do have some serious limitations on the amount of sampling you can do with it. Um, I tried for the heck of it um, to build... Uh, I I wasn't aware of the limitations, let's put it that way, when I first got it. I there's, There was a uh, competition for mobile music... Uh, mobile musician or something. I forget the, the, the website, but... Maybe mobile music maker YouTube. It's, he's a guy who does YouTube stuff and he shows how to make music with iPads. And he had a, a Halloween competition and he and Doug from the sound test room put out a sample pack with uh, all of these like kind of Halloween-y samples. So I was like, all right, I'm going to make something with this. So I said, before I start, what I'm going to do to give myself the most... Uh, ability here type thing the most capability is i'm going to take all these samples and copy them in you know yeah i like hardware i mean yeah well you know i do like hardware i definitely do and you know what though is, is cool that i did discover is that with a uh with a midi control with a midi uh or a usb adapter on my iphone um and my it's not the, it's not my usual, like, when I go around my iPad, I usually bring this guy with me, um, which I, I love this, the Nano Key Studio. It gives you a little bit of everything. You've got like four pads, you've got, you know, two octaves of keys, um, yeah, turns on and off arpeggiators, you got your knobs, and you can pick, pick, uh, scales and the whole thing. It's, it's a pretty awesome little thing, and you got a chaos, chaos pad in the middle, um, now that's cool, but 
it does not work well with my iPhone. So what I end up doing when I use my iPhone is I take this guy with me, which is basically the uh, the little version of uh, of that device. It's USB hardwired. It doesn't do a lot. It's just strictly keys. Uh, but boom, these two things, iPhone and this, and off we go. I'm able to make basically do some music stuff right there. So, I mean, yeah. But now, if you think of it in terms of this now, though, if I take... Uh, okay, if I take this guy right here and plug in my USB dongle off the back, right? Which I've got one that... Uh, this is not a great example of this because uh, this one uh, doesn't have a separate thing for power like the one the one that i use normally has like a power on the side but if i take this i can actually technically plug this right into my phone um i haven't tried it yet i mean but and use this as a controller uh i could use this as its own sampler type thing i don't know what other capabilities there would be yet that way um it would be nice if there were more capabilities and uh if it does work and this thing is uh, is class compliant uh, in that way, which it might be. There's a possibility that I could write some software myself for the iPhone to transfer sounds from my iPhone uh, to this unit over the USB, um, which would be pretty awesome. You know, what I mean, if I could just like just load samples, basically render stuff out on my iPhone into a drive and then just drag it off and drop it in across the, you know, to, to the uh, memory card on this guy right here. I mean, I could already, I guess, technically, um, it does use an SD card <clears throat> and it does have a, a format to it where it's, a uh, can't remember what it looks like, but let me see if I got that other card right here. I think I do. Just for the heck of it. Um, let's go over here. And we're going to go to... Is this the one? No, that's not it. Let's just look at this PC for a second. I gotta find the one that's uh, 64 gig. Uh, let's see, why is it not showing up? Oh, there we go. Drive in, here we go. If we look in here, this uh, is actually one of the uh, folders. It's the Circuit Tracks factory pack. This is what comes with Circuit Tracks. Um, so I haven't really looked at this yet. Oh, I don't know what's going to happen now. I'm not sure even what this is right here. Native Instruments. Uh, yeah, let's just close that. I don't know what that's all about. Okay, these are the patches. I don't know how this exactly is laid out, but I feel like if I open this with Notepad, open with. We'll just take a little a little look see. Uh, oh yeah, that's not gonna help me out much, is it? Nope. Well, I feel like there's definitely gotta be a way here to uh, uh, read these in English somehow. I'll have to see if there's a, some kind of translator type thing that, that lets you 
convert them to like a pack that you can modify easily. I don't know, maybe there's not, but it'd be neat to be able to spit uh, sounds out from uh, my phone directly to this device. I mean, there's got to be something about the format that's recognizable or understandable. I'll have to, I haven't had time to really. That was the first time I looked at it, so just a thought. Um, I like buying hardware too. I love hardware. I do, I, but I love software too. And honestly, you know what's cool is, I mean, like with Reason, something like Reason. I don't even know why. Honestly, sometimes I look at myself and I say, "Why do you buy something like this? Why would? Why am I buying like when really, um, I've got software synthesizers like Mimic." And things like that that bury this thing's capability. You know what I mean? I mean, I can do a hundred times more powerful things with Mimic than I can do with this. Um, but this is just fun. And it's stupid fun to me. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, I will uh, sometimes just, I don't know. It's not like I've got like infinite disposable income. I definitely don't. Um, I wish I did. That'd be awesome. But like buying things like this just makes me, it brings me some, some kind of joy. I, and things, some things I don't keep, I'll buy them, try them, send them back. Um, this is a keeper. The, uh, what is it? MCMK. The, well, the, the new 404, uh, sorry. It's the, uh, the Roland something 404, uh, that they just released. I'm going to try it out. I doubt that thing's going to be kept because it's 500 bucks um, to buy it. And I just kind of want to get a look at it and see what, what it's all about. Um, I'll get the model number so we can. Uh, rolling. SP404, that's the model, that's the name. The SP404 MK2. Um, it just looks, it's funny, it looks like a calculator. Um, but it's pretty popular with uh, the DJs and that type of thing. Um, I mean, I'm going to put this on the screen. I mean, does this not look like a like a TI scientific calculator to everyone else? I don't know. I look at it and I'm like, wow, that's weird that you went like from 1 to 9. And then you have 10 through 16. People are lazy and won't just type 1, 6. What? No, I'm kidding. But, uh, I mean, it, it looks pretty cool. Um, and it, some of the things it does are really unique. Uh, I feel like it might be worth trying out. And I have friends, my one friend, uh, DJ Surge, who actually, I don't know if you've, uh, in your, in your DJ career, did you ever hear of a, a label called X-Mix, um, in Boston? Yeah, dude, I hate that when people are like scammer. Like right now, I'm waiting for something to come that I that I got I won off of eBay, and I'm like, is this gonna come or is this not gonna come? I'm giving the guy one more day if he doesn't ship it to me. If I don't see this, the shipping has happened, I'm getting in touch with eBay and gonna be like, let's cancel this thing because it's been a few days and I've been I've sent him several messages and heard nothing back. Um, so you know that's just uh. I got better things to do than wait for this Jamoke to send me, you know, something I, I paid for, you know. Um, I'm just taking a quick peek actually right now off, off camera to see if this guy replied yet. Yeah, I had one thing I was outbid on. I, I bid on a uh, a circuit groove box. 
Um, and that was the old circuit. And it was starting, the bid was starting at nine bucks. So, and I'm bid on it. And now the bid's up to $76. I'm like, I don't really even want it. I would have taken it for 20 bucks or something just because, you know, it would be cool to have and just to show as like a prop or whatever. But I'm not going to go crazy trying to win outdated tech um, that I don't really want. But uh, let's see here. Look over here again, and I'm just checking to see if this guy did reply at all yet. Yeah, he's made no move. So I'm gonna I'm gonna actually hit hit up eBay and be like, yo, turn this thing off. I'm not this guy's you know, refund my money, whatever. Um It was worth a try, you know what I mean? Anyway. But uh it was for our circuit tracks. I thought that'd be cool, a cool like little partner for this guy here. Um, but it's not I'm not saving a ton of money buying it from this guy and I can get it brand new for not much more. Uh, so that's fine. Because... Yeah, this guy's not even replying to messages, so you know, I think the guy's full of crap. Um, and I paid with the. Uh, on eBay, that eBay is good about covering like this crap if they if they uh, if nothing happens. So I'll just uh, let them know that I'm I'm pulling out of this deal. So anyway, well I better get going, man. I'm gonna kill the stream. Uh, TCK sounds, dude. Uh, dude, subscribe to my channel, man. I'll, I'll subscribe back to just to you know push each other forward. I'll and, and uh, I mean I will keep watching your videos. I really appreciate what you got going on there. And uh, Ivan, dude, I appreciate you. You've been, uh, I, it's, it's crazy, man. I, I'm glad I actually got to, to chat with you here. Um, I did uh, most of what I wanted to do, I guess. Uh, sure enough, six days, I found my money and was refunded. Yeah. Good. That's good. So you didn't get, you didn't lose anything. That's good. Because I just, I hate people who scam, man. It's like, you know. I got better things to do than waste time and wait for something that's, you know, products that never show up or whatever. So, um, so, all right, guys, I'll see you guys later. Have a great evening. I will see you in the plan. Um, thank you for hanging out with me. I appreciate it. I hope you liked the stream. Bye for now.